Hello, and welcome to The Pixel Show. I'm your host, Robert Evans, and this is technically our second episode of The Pixel Show. Hopefully you guys watched the bio show and kind of learned a little bit about what we're doing and where we're going with this. Um, it's been something that we've been working on for a year, and I'm just excited to get going. So today, we're going to launch into our segments, and the very first segment uh, that we're going to do is the power of simple. This is something that I talk about, that I teach about, that I'm super passionate about. Um, and so there's many, we're going to have an ongoing series. Our photo contest will, that we do in the future will run off of this. So anyway, let's jump right into it so you can kind of get an idea and see what we're doing. So the power of simple, this actually image that's up right now um, is really what gave me the title is probably the most simplistic image I've taken. Uh, so here we let's jump in, you know, basically it's simple t techniques that'll make your images more powerful really by doing less and just helping you focus and, and uh, put your image forward and, and get rid of some of the noise. Um, like this quote by Leo Tolstoy, there is no greatness where there is no simplicity. So I kind of came to the power of simple, uh, just because I was looking at other people's work and, and looking and like, what did I like about that? And the one thing that I sort of found was that I like the simplicity of it all. So I sort of developed this, um, and over the episodes and the segments that we're going to do on this show, we'll be talking about these different things under the umbrella of the power of simple, uh, but color, retouch and remove, depth of field, light, cropping, you name it. So there'll be many, many episodes of this and keep coming back and watching them, but let's jump in. So today we're going to start off with patterns, lines, and space. Um, so the very first image, uh, you're looking at. I'll give you a little story about each image. Uh, this is an image that I took floating down the Nishnabotna River, um, which is a river in Iowa. I was floating down the river in a more or less a giant bathtub. Um, and as I floated down the river, I, I brought my camera. I was with my wife and my kids and my father in law. And uh, we're passing cornfields. And, and this one image really caught me because it was just really interesting as the edge of the cornfields were, you know, falling into the river. So let's break it down and kind of see uh, the patterns, lines, and space here in this image. So the first thing that you notice is the division, you know, the, the horizon line, if you will, uh, of, the, of the soil and the corn. Um, and then the thing you notice is the vertical lines of the corn stalks right at the edge against the white sky. So here you have all this negative space below, so hence your space, and then the vertical lines above. Um, and you have the texture of the dirt, you know, so it's a, it was a color image, of course, because I shoot digital, uh, but I made this black and white because I truly felt that it needed. And so you see the rich different tones of the texture here and the contrast between the dirt and the sky. So I think that's what kind of makes this image work because you kind of have a very blank, bland lower half and then a, a bright and then vertical lines going up. So the next image, uh, this is an, an engagement shoot that I did at the Getty Museum in Los Angeles. Um, so it's at the little cafe at the museum. And the fun part about this image is I kind of envisioned it. I saw all the patterns and the lines of the, these chairs and I wanted to use them. So I told my couple, I'm like, Hey, sit here at this table. I'm going to go up above and I'm going to, uh, take, you know, take your picture, but I'm going to go up there. So give me a little time to get up there. So I walked up there and as I looked down, I saw the two of them kissing and they set their coffee table. So literally, like, I quickly snapped off a few images and that was that. And I, I kind of said to them, like, oh, I'm done. And they're like, what? You know, but I got what I wanted. But let's look at. So you see here the uh, vertical lines that the tables are creating. So the lines are actually leading right to the couple. And it really helps that they were both wearing black. Um, the chairs themselves create patterns. So it's kind of like a, 
a busy, noisy image, but they pop off of it because they're the only thing not in the same pattern and they're wearing black. And then, of course, there's negative space. So there's a nice distance between them. Uh, negative space is really great when you're, you, you know, shooting. I use a lot of it in my work. I rarely center things except when it needs to be center. So I really thought this worked. So moving on. Oh, well, and a te texture. So there's a little texture that the tables create, too. But we said that. Okay. So I call this the one-way Irish road. Um, I took this picture in Ireland a few summers ago. I was in London shooting a wedding, and then I went over to Ireland for a week and drove around and wanted to take photos. Why not when you're over there? And uh, this road was actually a road that the uh, navigation took me on. We were going to the Cliffs of Moher, and, and we went down this one-way road, and I saw this, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I have to get out and take this photo because it was so cool. I mean, literally, you could not get one car past each other. So I got out, I was taking the photo, and then I noticed this car crest the peak. And of course I took the image because I like the car in that position. Um, but then I thought to myself like, oh my gosh, how in the world are we gonna pass each other? So we got back in our cars and we drove until we met in the middle, sort of like two sneeches on beaches. And uh, I sort of figured it'd be another uh, local Irish person that, you know, like, so what do we do? And it was another tourist, a girl. And uh, basically, to make a long story short, we sort of pulled over a little bit. And then she pulled over. I got out and directed traffic while my friend drove. And we were literally like inches away from each other. But, but that's the story and the memory of the photograph. So let's break it down. So again, the elements here, you have leading lines, you know, the road, of course, leading to the car. Uh, you have the negative space, which I mentioned before, super important. And, you know, it takes your eye in that direction. The bushes sort of also create a line, if you will. And it just gives the whole image like good symmetry. It takes your eye like right through it. Okay, so one moat boat. So this image, like I mentioned at the top of the show, uh, was the image that sort of helped me come up with this concept, the power of simple. Uh, I was just with my family on vacation, and this was floating out. This was taken in San Luis Obispo, and this little buoy dinghy boat was just floating against this, and, and uh, I split it. So here, the leading lines in here, you have, of course, the diagonal line that splits right down the middle of the photo, kind of dividing it in half. Um, and then you have, uh, if you divide it right in two, and then again, vertically and horizontally, it's almost split into four equal pieces with the boat in the lower right. Um, you can, one way to tip that's a good to do this, if, you're, if your cameras have that, I keep it on in my camera, is the rule of thirds grid. So when I'm looking and I'm composing an image, I'm always looking at that composition and keeping things you know, in check and things with negative space, et cetera. So it just gives good space, right? There's a lot of there's you know a lot of nice space in here. And the one thing I think really to keep your photos the most simplistic when you can do it is to have the min most minimalistic background. The water makes it so simple. You know, you only have two things in this image. You have the rope and the boat. And so the background is you know, super simple, just blue water. So whenever possible, you have a background like that, your image is going to jump out. So it just really gives everything nice balance. Okay. Talked about that. Okay, so this image uh, I took in Italy. And uh, this was years ago. This is actually a film image. And I was in Pisa. And when I go to Europe or any other place, you know, I typically don't like to go to the busy touristy places. I want to see the, you know, especially Italy, the hilltop towns and the places that nobody else go. But we were in Pisa, we were in Pisa and we went uh, to see the Leaning Tower. But I was walking around and I walked back in this complex and I, I definitely knew and felt like I shouldn't be there. But I sort of also had that little intuition like there's a picture back here. And so I kept walking and, and walked out under the scene and, and this is what I saw. Um, I saw this bike against this, you know, kind of textury wall with the old wooden door. And 
I was like, oh my gosh, there's the picture. I, you know, I took a couple pictures of it. Um, I did happen to walk above. I went up some steps and looked down. And so what was behind this was uh, open gardening where everyone sort of shares a gardening space. So somebody was probably in there gardening and left their bike outside. So the elements of this... Of course, you have negative space created from uh, the top of the wall to the bike. You have the negative space between the door and the wall. The texture of the wall. So you have this nice old, you know, you see the old brick coming through, the, the paint peeling, whatever that is. Um, and it's just minimal. Again, there's like very little in the photo. It's just the bike and the door and the texture. So those things really help your photos to jump out. And of course, rule of thirds. So it is, again, there's negative space. It's in the right third of the frame. This image uh, was taken in New York. Um, I love this image because one of the first sports my boys started playing was baseball. And I liked baseball. Football was kind of my sport. And then uh, when he started playing baseball, I started watching more baseball and started really enjoying it. Um, and so when I saw walking through Central Park and I saw these baseball fields uh, with the view of the buildings in the background, I was like, oh, my gosh. So uh, I was like, how, how do you take a picture of this? And, you know, there were no players, nothing like to kind of really show it. So I walked into the diamond and I got down low and I made home plate my subject, if you will, in this image, and then, you know, show the distance of the buildings in the background. So you see right away the division. You have the dividing line almost equally in half between the field and the dirt to the trees and the building. Uh, so the dirt does create negative space. And then you have the vertical lines of the buildings shooting out from the top of the trees. And then the subject is in the lower third. Again, the subject is home plate. So you have the horizontal split. It gives it very nice balance between the dirt, which has nice texture, the negative space, and the texture. Um, so I think what makes this image work is the fact that I got down low. Sometimes it's nice, you, you know, you look at a picture I always encourage you to look at differently, like shoot it standing up, shoot it down, shoot it looking down, walk around it if you can. Um, look for the picture until you find the one that you want. So that's it. This is a recap of the six images. On this show, we're just going to do six images at a time. It'll be different topics. So today was pattern lines in space. Next time is going to be depth of field. But we had the image on the Nishnabotna River. We had the New York image. Pisa bike image, uh, the boat in the water, Ireland, and the engagement shoot. So thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoy this. I hope you enjoy this series. It's something that uh, I'm going to keep going and one at a time, get better and better. Uh, love to hear your feedback. Reach out to us. Let us know what you want to see, what you like. But thanks again for watching.